As we get ever closer to 0 0.16's stable release, the list of PRs merging into the release candidate is looking more and more like a few small bug fixes. This is great and points to the stable release coming fairly soon, although as always there are no deadlines for when this happens, but if we take a look at the 0 0.16 milestone, which is up on screen right now, you can see that we're about 96% complete, and the items that are in the queue are basically all pull requests waiting to be merged. This is in contrast to earlier in the cycle when most of the list here is actually issues that need to be fixed. Some members of the community this week also took time to participate in Ludum Dare, including games about digging and about scanning the seafloor. Meanwhile, crates like Bevy Enhanced Input are still getting releases and are getting better documentation, including this quick start guide you can see on screen. And there's a new Bevy UI related inspector crate that we'll talk about later. With that, if you are using the 0 0.16 release candidate and you happen to also be using forward decals, it's notable that the direction of the decal depth has been inverted in 18772. As indicated in the issue, this new behavior matches the documentation, which was already written, in which a higher number means the decal will blend with surfaces further away. And the atmosphere shaders might be one of the prettiest things in 0 0.16. 18582 introduces web support for the new atmosphere's functionality. Check it out before 0 0.16 finally drops by running the atmosphere example. And that brings us to the showcases this week. This is a work in progress demo using Bevy MIDI X, which enables the use of a sound font and MIDI commands to play music in your games. It can handle input from MIDI devices, MIDI files, and other live events. And the author hopes to make a release to coincide with Bevy 0 0.16. And hopping on over to Blue Sky for a second, this demo shows off moving cards around and stacking them and selecting the stacks to pick individual cards out of. And Foxtrot is a 3D Bevy game template aimed at desktop usage. This is a sneak peek at a rework of the template. The goals of the rework are to reduce complexity, reduce features, and make the organization in line with the Bevy new 2D template. Additional goals include reducing the number of dependencies on crates that may take a long time to upgrade to new Bevy versions, and using more modern Bevy features, such as single and trigger. Then we have an integration of the Bevy materialized crate with the Spirit Editor, which in this demo is powering an animated portal. This is allowing extended materials, or standard material extensions to be placed on what are being called doodads. And welcome to Perilous. Perilous is a multiplayer survival game with an emphasis on building small sediment, defending against threats and managing the survival of villagers. Players begin alone in a cursed land and must gather resources, build fortifications, hire and attract villagers and fend off supernatural dangers. Something notably interesting about this project is that it uses Bevy ECS and Big Brain on the back end with a Phaser 3 JavaScript front end. Next up, we've got a live reload proof of concept using Relib, which basically means having an executable that creates the Bevy app and a dynamic library which contains the game itself. And then we've got an update from Iggy's world, including work on the Woodland Haven level, including quest and dialogue systems powered by Yarn Spinner. There's a new Iggy model with improved controls, and the project has moved to story-driven development after updating to Bevy 0.15.3. The project switched to Bevy Skeen and is planning on utilizing Bevy Seedling, the Firewheel integration crate for audio that's coming out of the audio working group. And then we've got another update from Lumina. This is 0.2.1 gameplay. That is raw footage of gameplay amongst the developers of Lumina, a top-down, fast-paced, objective-based PvP game. And here we've got a demo of Mevi's macro implementations, showing off the creation of spawning nodes with styles and pointer interaction. Mevi actually also gets a release later, so we'll talk about this again. And we've seen a demo of this before, but this is a custom from scratch crowd simulation working on multiple floors, simulating passengers of a subway station. The paper, A Comparative Study of Navigation Meshes, is referenced as a resource for those that would also want to build similar tools. And excuse the compression on this one, but 4K graphics are not the point. This is some visual animation for a card related game, including card selection, confirmation, and hand to board effects. And next up, we've got a text editor with input method editor support. Input method editors let users enter non-QWERTY characters by typing a combination of keystrokes or making a sequence of mouse operations. And next up, we've got an LD Jam entry. This is the Sonar boat game made with Bevy and Skeen. Use your sonar to search the ocean floor. Can you find all of the things? And in another Bevy entry to Ludum Dare, using Avian, Hanabi, Bevy ECS, LDTK, I can't believe it's not BSN and Krita for the art. You're Jeremiah's Jammy Bolt, a lonely robot stuck atop an inactive volcano. You have a laser gun and not much else. The goal is to find all the green gems, but you can't dig upwards. If you run out of fuel, you can't dig anymore, so keep an eye on your battery. Our next showcase is going to be a fully white screen, so if you're sensitive to that, be prepared. 
This is a new shader explorer that exposes structs and functions used in WGSL files in the Bevy repo. Notably, this project takes a different approach than other docs that have attempted to solve the same problem, choosing to use regex and handlebars instead of using Naga or Naga oil to compile the shaders. It's also worth noting that the future of shader documentation is also looking interesting with prototypes that make use of the new weasel support and infrastructure. And this demo shows off mutating component values using BRP or the Bevy remote protocol in the development version of a VS Code Bevy inspector. And we've talked about atmospheres already this issue, but this is a terrain and atmosphere system in a planetary environment. Clouds react to lighting and cast shadows on the terrain, and the cloud texture is procedural, which means weather can change over time. There's a bunch of additional context around implementation, bevy terrain, and the new 0.16 atmosphere features in the Discord thread, so definitely go check it out if this looks interesting to you. And finally, for our showcase, we've got Drexel's Tower Defense. This is a splash damage implementation in Drexel's Tower Defense. The project posts updates in its own thread in the Bevy Discord, so go check that out. And with that, we'll get into the crates. This is Bevy Convars 0.1.1, an early Hey Come Try This Out release for Bevy 0.16 RC4. Bevy Convars is an implementation of what we're calling Convars. This is a granular solution for runtime configuration, like rendering game settings, alongside comprehensive config loading code that supports handy features like config layers. And then we've got Mevi 0.2. Mevi is a set of macros aimed at improving the developer experience of Bevy UI and Bevy ECS. 0.2 supports Bevy 0.15 and Bevy 0.16's release candidate through feature selection. And then we've got Alo, A-A-L-O, or Bevy Inspector Halka. Alo is called a Bevy UI native inspector built with Halka, which aims to port much of the behavior of Bevy Inspector eGUI to Bevy UI. This is a pre-0.1 release, so expect the docs and more to improve before the actual 0.1 release. And Bevy Text Edit 0.5.1 is released this week. Bevy Text Edit is an input text plugin, and 0.5.1 brings a built-in virtual keyboard. And that brings us to our final crate, Bevy Enhanced Input 0.9. Bevy Enhanced Input is an input manager for Bevy inspired by Unreal Engine Enhanced Input. The 0.9 release contains many changes, most notably the component-based API for contexts, and the contributors also reworked the documentation, now including a quick start guide that walks you through the API. And that brings us to our educational pieces this week. This is Bevy Behave, a tutorial that covers Bevy Behave, behavior trees for Bevy, with on-demand entity spawning for task nodes. And then we've got a YouTube video, Bevy Basics, Who Observes the Observer, which is a Bevy Basics video covering observers. And that's it for this week. If you're interested in seeing all the little bug fixes that have gone into the 0.16 RC4 release, you can check them out either on the website this week or on GitHub under the 0.16 milestones. That's it for me for this week. Have a great rest of yours, and I'll see you next week.